have about three minutes. Thank you. You're welcome. I will fix it on my computer, but our Elf on the Shelf hijacked the Zoom meeting. That's not going to be the problem all the time. It's Whoa, 25 people on a Zoom meeting. I feel very privileged. So let me see. Let me see who I have in attendance here from Ms. Gonzalez's class. Participants. We have Aiden. Are there any other teachers here or just students? There's just students that I know of now. There's somebody else. Ms. Rodriguez might pop in in a few minutes. I don't know. Um. Elizabeth. Miss um, Gonzalez's class, is there anybody that's normally here that's missing today or is this everybody that normally shows up? Y'all know, Andrew. Goodness, there's so many of them. One, two, three. Desiree, here's Des Jordan. Oh, majority's our class, guys. Oh, they want me to take attendance, but You want me to take attendance? Uh, all right, are we ready? Let's see what we got here. Unfreeze. On free. Let's go. What's our first word? You can tell me our first word on here. You can just unmute yourself. Attract. 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 What was number two? Number two was disrupt. 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 Okay, we're in agreement. Disrupt. Number three. Distract. The next one was distract. Yeah, there's two of y'all in here that are saying that. Distract. This was too easy. What's next? No, the um, number two is uh, erupt. Oh, 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 you forgot oh. what? Oh, yeah, distraction. Distraction, yeah. I don't know if you said it earlier or not. Distraction. So far, so good, right? Yep. What's next, Vida? Now you know what's next. Erupt. 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 Eruption. And then eruption. Yep. Whoever that was. Daniel, was that you? Okay. Um, what's after that? Uh interrupt. 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 Oh, my handwriting looks bad. That's an R. The second one should be distract. The second one? Look. Territory, I think I have. DIS, DIS, and then R comes before T. Right? Next, wait, the next one is, is, is territory, I think you have another. That's what I wrote down. That's fine. Um, go ahead, Vida. No. Next word is territory, I think you can pronounce it. 
Not territor territorial. I, d I did mine wrong. Oops. You got terrain and territorial. Which one comes first? They both have T E R R. Terrain. Terrain. There we go. Yeah. Terrain. I did mine wrong too. I just checked that. And then territorial. We all oh, make mistakes. Because see the oh. I and the A. That's the only difference, Viva. I was confused because whenever you wrote it on the ABC order, you there had it you like at the bottom of like, it was like at the bottom. So territory was worse than territorial and terrain. Ah, oh, what's next? It's fine. Um, territory. Territorial? Nope. We got one more. It was. Right here, traction. Do you not get oh, traction? Yeah. yeah, traction. Miss Hernandez. Yes, go ahead. Go back to that page. Did I write it wrong? Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of, yeah. Did I write it wrong? Because you put territory. Yeah, you did it wrong because, like, on the T, it's like territory. Oh, territory! That's what you're saying. The second one, it says it's just tracked. That's why. Tracked. T, T, but then you got disrupt. Territory. No wonder you're saying territory. But territory would still come after territorial because of the Y and the R. Ah, I forgot that one. Maybe all like 10 words there? I don't know. Anyways, it's a Monday. Let's move on. Get your My View book out. I know we read the story like twice last week, but we're going to just read it today because we already highlighted and everything, and then we'll go back and do the close read together. Got it? Is it the sloth? I don't know. Uh, is it that animal? The yeah, we're still on that story. I know. It seems like we've been doing it forever. We're still on that story. Who remembers something specific about that animal that uh, makes you unique? The what? The platypus? Anyone. Yeah, you can tell me one um, detail. About the the echidna so burrows under down where predators come yeah. near it. Oh, yep. Also with the platypus, it also... It told us in the story that it has like five different kind of animals like that on its body. Like oh, okay, like a hodgepodge put together. Yeah, five different animals. Like yeah, part. like it said it was half. It was half like uh, I don't know. Uh, it was half something. Uh huh. Like yep. Beaver. Beaver, and, and then it has has what like a bird? Uh, eggs. 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 It lays eggs and like poison. Birds. Reptile, it has poison. What else does it have on its mouth? Um, uh, uh beavers. Uh, I think it's a beaver. Look on uh, the, one, the page with the I'm looking for it right now. With the black, what does it have? Beak. On its mouth? It has a beak. But what's special or what's different about the platypus and the echidna's beak compared to a bird's beak? Or is one like one of them has grinding and then one of them they just push it on with their feet. No, no, no. The platypus has a flat beak. Yeah, one at a time. Be the what were you saying? Actually, uh, actually the like, are we talking about the platypus or the other animal? Whichever one. Uh, well, the other animal it doesn't like the bird's beak. It has two sides. Mm -hmm. if you know what I mean? And then the and the and. The, I think the other animal's beak only has one side. So do they open? Do the echidna or the platypus's beak open or not? I think no. the, the echidna doesn't, but I think the platypus does. Like echidna is like, they don't have like the beak of like a bird that they have. Yeah, the, the, it's not like a bird's beak. It's more for like trying to get into um, logs to find food and stuff. Or it has sensors. Y'all remember about the sensors, right? It has those sensors in its beak to help it find food, even though it can't. The echidna and platypus are both mammals. 
They're both mammals. What 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 is that specific mammal they're called, or what species of mammal are they called? It's one of your monotremes. Monotremes, which means they are mammals that lay eggs. I forgot to go over. Mammals that lay eggs. Yeah. Let me share my screen, and we'll read this story again, even though we've already read it like 19 times. Or we'll just read it, and we've already highlighted, and we'll go back and do our close read. So share. Can y'all see? The weird and wonderful echidna. The weird and wonderful echidna and the very peculiar platypus. Oh, sorry, Paige. What page is this on? I didn't tell you what page. It's uh, on page 375. 375. Thank you, Daniel. Sorry. 375 in your My View book. That's the page. 375. By Mike Jung and Wade Hudson. The Weird and Wonderful Echidna. Australia is home to some of the most unique animals on earth. Kangaroos and koalas live here. A giant bird called the emu does too. Of all the creatures that live in Australia, the echidna is one of the strangest. This small creature makes its home in Australia and also on the island of New Guinea. The echidna is also known by its common name, the spiny anteater. The name describes two of the echidna's amazing traits. All echidnas have spines. Some eat ants, but those are the only two of the traits of this strange and wonderful creature. If you met an echidna, you might have a hard time figuring out what kind of animal it is. To begin with, the echidna has a beak, but it doesn't have feathers and it doesn't fly, so it's not a bird. The echidna lays soft eggs like a snake does, but the echidna is not a reptile. The echidna is a mammal. The echidna belongs to a group of mammals known as monotremes. They are the only mammals on earth that lay eggs. There are only two kinds of monotremes. One is the echidna and the other is the platypus. Monotremes have lived on earth longer than any other mammals. Several adaptations have helped them to thrive. The one species of short-beaked echidna lives throughout Australia and on New Guinea. Short-billed echidna. The echidna's beak is a rare feature among mammals. It's also a fabulously adapted tool for finding food. Echidnas live in forested areas and feed on insects, worms, and other tiny creatures. An echidna's beak is long and pointy. However, the beak doesn't have two halves that open like a bird's beak. Instead, the echidna uses its beak as a digging tool. It pokes and prods to find its prey. The echidna's beak is tough. In fact, it's strong enough to break open a rotten log or dig into the soil in search of a tasty meal. The most amazing thing about the echidna's beak is something you can't see. The beak has sensors inside it. The sensors detect electrical signals given off by living creatures. That means an echidna can locate prey without seeing, hearing, or touching it. It's a kind of mammal superpower. The three species of long-beaked echidna are found exclusively on the island of New Guinea. Long-billed echidna. An echidna's mouth is small and it has no teeth. The echidna uses its beak to crush a worm or insect into tiny pieces. Then it takes the pieces into its mouth and swallows them. Scientists classify echidnas according to beak length. There are short-beaked echidnas and long-beaked echidnas. The one species of short-beaked echidna lives throughout Australia and on New Guinea. The three species of long-beaked echidna are found exclusively on the island of New Guinea. If you were to see an echidna in person, the first thing you might notice is its coat of spines. The spines are short and hollow. They are made of keratin, the same material that makes up your hair and fingernails. Can you find me? An echidna's spines are like a coat of armor. They protect the echidna from predators such as the dingo, a kind of wild dog. When a predator approaches, an echidna rolls itself up into a ball. The ball appears to be nothing but spines. Predators usually think twice before chomping down. In addition, the echidna's spines play another important role. 
They serve as camouflage to help the animal hide from predators. The spines are colored with sections of white, black, and brown. The spines blend well with the surrounding colors of rock, soil, and dead leaves. Like all other mammals, the echidna also has fur, though some echidnas are furrier than others. The amount of fur depends upon where the echidnas live. Echidnas occupy a range of habitats, from the chillier regions of Australia to warmer, drier places in New Guinea. The ones in colder areas tend to have more fur. Those in warmer climates have less. The strong, sharp spines of an echidna help keep it safe from predators. Ouch! The echidna has many features, like its long tongue, that are adapted to meet its needs. What's for dinner? If you think the echidna's beak and spines are incredible, wait until you see its tongue. The echidna's tongue is a simply amazing tool, and it's perfectly adapted to capture the kinds of prey the echidna needs. There are two different kinds of echidna tongues. That's because different kinds of echidnas eat different kinds of food. One type of echidna has a long sticky tongue. The other type has a short tongue that is covered with hooks. It may seem backward, but the short-beaked echidna has a long sticky tongue. The tongue is extremely flexible. It's great for grabbing ants, termites, and other tiny prey. The short-beaked echidna is expert at flicking its tongue into the nooks and crannies where those animals live. The long-beaked echidna doesn't eat ants at all. In fact, worms are its only prey, but its tongue is perfectly adapted for worm catching. The long-beaked echidna probes the soil with its beak. When it finds a worm, it sticks out its tongue. The tiny hooks on the tongue hook into the earthworm. Then the echidna pulls its tongue back into its mouth and the earthworm becomes lunch. When it comes to predators, the echidna has another secret weapon, its claws. When an echidna is startled or attacked, it hides by doing something no other mammal in the world can do. Charlie, we're on page, ooh, hold on. In our my view, we're on page, hold on. Page, um, 381 in your my view book. Or on the pages that I printed out for you. It should be in those pages I printed out for you. It should be with the, the echidna on front and then, okay. I'll help you later, Charlie, put the answers in Canvas. But right thank now, you, Ms. Hernandez. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Um, did you find it, Charlie, or just follow along with us? It's fine right now. It digs itself straight down into the ground. How does the echidna pull off this trick? The claws play a big role. Tough and heavy, they can move a lot of dirt in a short amount of time. Other adaptations help the claws do their job. First of all, the echidna has a strong skeleton. Second, the echidna might be small, but it's incredibly muscular. Those muscles can pull hard to dig very fast. When a predator approaches, the claws, skeleton, and muscles of the echidna go to work. In seconds, the small mammal can burrow almost completely into the earth. Once the echidna is dug in, its camouflage spines make it very hard to see. And because the only part that's exposed is spines, many predators will pass it by. What's the echidna's most amazing adaptation? Some people might think it is the beak. Others might vote for the spines or the echidna's digging ability. But the echidna has another amazing adaptation that you can't see. It's a special layer of muscle that wraps around the echidna's whole body. This muscle layer makes the echidna's body very strong. And even more important, it allows the echidna to change its shape. It can roll itself up into a ball, or it can flatten itself to the thickness of a spiny pancake. That extreme flexibility comes in handy. The echidna can squish itself flat to squeeze into a hiding spot when a predator lurks. It can turn itself into a ball of spines to protect itself from a hungry dingo. Amazing adaptations. The echidna's unusual muscles allow it to change shape. Flat as a pancake. I wonder where its head's at. It's gotta be up front, right? This thing up here. 
Because I don't think they have tails. Oh, I'm trying to figure out its head. I guess it's up here. It's interesting. The echidna has one more unique feature. The echidna's body temperature is about 85 to 89 degrees Fahrenheit. In case you are wondering, your own body temperature is a toasty 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. That means the echidna has a lower body temperature than any other mammal. Scientists think that a cool body temperature might help the echidna live longer. Surprisingly, echidnas live as long as 45 years in the wild. Other small mammals don't live nearly as long. When they need to, echidnas can turn down their body temperature even lower than normal. When they do this, all their body functions, such as breathing, heart rate, and digestion, slow down too. This state is called torpor, and it's a bit like hibernation. When in torpor, the echidna uses less energy, so it needs less food. This is useful during the winter when prey is harder to find. It's also helpful during times of crisis, such as when a forest fire occurs. Scientists think this trait is one reason that the echidna has managed to survive, but it's just one of the adaptations that makes the tiny, spiny echidna one of the most amazing creatures on Earth. Hollow logs can provide a short-beaked echidna both food and shelter. It didn't say like how big they were, right? Because it said the platypus was like 18 inches long. Yeah, I never said it. And like, I look up what a dingo is. It's like, it's like a wolf a little bit. Yeah, I'm guessing so, it's not as big as like a platypus. They're probably like 18 inches too. They don't look very big. That one looks bigger than all the other pictures. That one looks a little bit more chubby. So is that why Santa Claus lives so long? Because he lives in like the North Pole, it's cold. Maybe that could be why Santa Claus lives so long. I didn't think about that. Or is that Maybe it's a little bit more scientific reason on why? Yeah, because he lives in the colder weather. A very peculiar platypus. Oh, the platypus. In the late 1700s, British scientists got their first glimpse of a platypus. Or rather, they received a platypus specimen that someone had sent from Australia. At first, they thought it was a joke. It looked as if someone had stitched a duck's bill and webbed feet to the skin of an otter or beaver. Mila, that's what it, you were talking about, how they said it's, um, it had stitched a duck's bill and webbed feet to the skin of the otter. It said beaver, not otter. Uh, an otter, or it says the skin of, oh, the skin of an otter or beaver. My bad, Mello, my bad. The platypus does look as if it were put together by a mad scientist. However, its seemingly strange collection of features and adaptations helps the platypus to survive in its Australian home. A most unlikely mammal. The platypus is a mammal, just like a mouse or a dog. It is a warm-blooded animal with a backbone, and it is covered with fur. The average platypus is about 18 inches long from nose to tail. It weighs anywhere from 1.5 to around 5 pounds. Males are generally larger than females. A platypus may live 13 or more years in the wild and 20 or more in captivity. A platypus does not have teeth. Instead, it has grinding plates inside its mouth. A platypus spends as much as 10 hours a day in the water. Therefore, lakes, rivers, and streams are always part of a platypus's habitat. A platypus usually forages or hunts for food at night. It swims underwater in search of insects, shellfish, and worms. A single dive usually lasts for a minute or two. While underwater, the platypus collects food from the river bottom and stores it in cheek pouches. When not looking for food, the platypus shelters in its burrow. A platypus burrow is usually built in the bank of a river or stream. Sometimes a platypus uses rocky spots along the edge of the water as shelter. At times, it may burrow under logs or among the roots of a tree for protection. In terms of size, traits, and behavior, the platypus is much like other mammals, but this is where the similarities end. The platypus is a special kind of mammal called a monotreme. The only other monotreme is the echidna, also called the spiny anteater. Like the platypus, the echidna is found in Australia, though echidnas also live in New Guinea. All other mammals give birth to live young. However, 
monotremes lay eggs. This is just one of many characteristics that make the platypus unusual. Duck-like features. The platypus's duck-like bill is its most notable feature, and its webbed feet are just as striking. Its bill and feet make it look more like a strange bird than a mammal. However, these features play important roles in survival. Because the platypus hunts for food underwater. Um, Natalie V. Where are you at, Natalie V? I'm gonna ask you. B or V? V, you! Why does it have um like webbed feet? Let's see if you're awake. So it could um it, it helps for them to swim a little bit better. Yeah, there you go. It helps them swim a little bit better. Just making sure you're awake. Swimming skills are vital to survival. A platypus's webbed feet make it an excellent swimmer. Using a rowing motion, first one front foot, then the other, the animal moves easily through the water. It can also hover in one spot, even against the current, while it searches for something to eat. The platypus's bill is flexible but strong. The animal uses it to push dirt aside when burrowing in riverbanks. Underwater, a platypus closes its eyes, ears, and nostrils. But how can the animal find food? Here is where the platypus's extraordinary bill comes into play. Unlike a duck's hard bill, a platypus's bill is rubbery. It serves as the platypus's sense organ when under the water. The bill has sensors that pick up electrical signals from prey. Eggs like a reptile. Platypus eggs aren't like the hard oval eggs that most birds lay. Instead, platypus eggs are similar to the round leathery eggs that reptiles such as lizards and turtles lay. The leathery shells are flexible. They are less likely to break during incubation than a hard shelled egg would be. The female platypus lays one to three eggs. She lays the eggs in a deep burrow and incubates them for about 10 days. When the baby platypuses hatch, they are naked and blind. Only the female platypus cares for the young. Like other mammals, the female platypus feeds milk to her young. When the platypuses are three to four months old, they leave the burrow. At that point, they have a full coat of fur. They have to learn how to swim and find food for themselves. Platypus poison. The male platypus has a particular feature that the female does not share. Like some species of insects, spiders, and snakes, the male platypus has venom. Sharp spurs on the heel of its hind feet deliver the venom, which is produced by a special gland in the male's thigh. Given a choice, a platypus dives underwater to escape a predator, or it dashes down a burrow. But if there is no choice, a male platypus uses its spurs to protect itself. A platypus egg is about the same diameter as a dime. A male platypus also uses its spurs when competing with other males for mates or territory. A well-adapted oddity. The platypus might be the oddest looking creature on earth. It seems- I wonder if it's, what do they call them? Spurs or nails, whatever, are made from keratin too. Like the echidna's spines. Seems to be part duck, otter, and beaver and part snake and spider too. What? It's a hodgepodge of strange features that don't seem to belong together. It shares the basic features of all mammals, but unlike other mammals, the platypus does not give birth to live young. It lays leathery eggs instead. The duck bill and webbed feet make it well suited for its habitat. And similar to a spider or snake, a platypus can defend itself with venom. The platypus looks like an animal made up of spare parts, but these seemingly unlikely adaptations allow the platypus to find food, protect itself, and reproduce successfully. This ensures the survival of these fascinating creatures. Interesting, interesting. I still think this is a very interesting animal. Whoa, there's so many people on here. There's 28 people for y'all not paying attention. Am I just like, what I think is weird is like, what was I gonna say? 
is why the like I wonder what the what predators the platypus has. I guess I would it be I don't know. I guess, guessing predators in the water maybe or in lakes. I don't know what, specifically. Kind of puss for kids. I don't know what animal specifically. Let's see. How long is this? Ah. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, that, that one looks more interesting. How long is that one? Let's look at this one. Today on Animal Fact Files, we're talking about the platypus. A platypus is a special kind of mammal oh, it's called tiny. a monotreme. There are few living monotremes today, and they're strange when compared to other mammals. The most obvious difference between monotremes and other mammals is that monotremes lay eggs. They also have a cloaca. Actually, the name monotreme means single hole and is in reference to a monotreme's cloaca. One would need to travel to Australia to find a wild platypus. The platypus is considered an amphibious oh, mammal and it. requires a permanent source of fresh water in its habitat. A platypus's front flippers are used for propulsion underwater, while the back flippers are used as rudders along with the tail. While on land, a platypus's front flippers fold to reveal its claws. These claws are used to dig out the burrows in which a platypus will rest. When first discovered, the platypus was thought to be a hoax. To be fair, a platypus does look like a combination of other animals. The platypus is also commonly called the duck-billed platypus because it seems to have a duck bill attached to its face. The resemblance is only superficial, however, because a platypus's bill is rubbery, covered in skin, and internally not structured the same way as a duck bill. A platypus's bill is important for gathering food. While underwater, the eyes, ears, and nose of a platypus all close. So the platypus goes by feeling to navigate. Hmm. Through its bill, a platypus is able to detect electrical pulses of animals and will seek them out by shaking its head back and forth while swimming. Once prey is located, a platypus can even overturn rocks with its bill in order to ah. dig out prey. The platypus will collect insects, crustaceans, tadpoles, fish, worms, and more, as well as stones in its cheek pouches. The stones help to grind up the food as an adult platypus doesn't have teeth. The platypus uh -huh. also looks like an otter with its slender body and waterproof fur and appears to have a beaver-like tail, but a platypus tail is less scaly and more furry than a beaver tail. The boys are larger than the girls, but on average, the platypus is one and a half feet long and three pounds in weight. A platypus begins breeding by four years of age. After mating, a female will dig a nest burrow lined with leaves and plugged up with soil. She'll lay one to three eggs and incubate them by holding them to her stomach with her tail. After another two weeks, the babies will hatch and nurse for three to four months. Platypus milk is sucked directly from the skin or fur, as these mammals don't have nipples. It's unknown how long the babies remain with their mother, but they're most vulnerable to predators when they leave her. Predators to the platypus include dingoes, there you go, dingoes, foxes, eels, birds of prey, feral cats, and more. So I guess they're more susceptible to their predators when they're on land. There's really not too many in the water. It seems it's kind of weird. Why they has more land predators than actually actual water predators? I guess because they can't stay underwater for that long. They don't have gills like a fish to where they can breathe underwater. They have a nose, a mouth, and ears that they have to close for only a certain amount of time, like us. And they can only be underwater for that amount of time. Like I think it's at a minute, right? A platypus is a slippery meal, however, because it has loose skin, Ew. making it difficult to grasp. The males may also use toxic spurs on their back legs to defend themselves. These spurs are present in each platypus until they reach about one year of age, at which point only the males retain them. The venom in a platypus's spurs is known to kill animals up to the size of a dog and cause pain in humans. At one point, the platypus almost went extinct due to overhunting for its fur. Now it's still threatened, but it's also protected. If a platypus can avoid predation, it may live to be more than 10 years old. For more facts on the platypus, check out the links in the description. Thank you to Harry for today's request.
Give a thumbs up if you learned something new today. And thank you for watching Animal Fact Files. So, so, so platypuses can, like, like so platypuses prayer is a dog, or like one of the predators is a type of dog, and it and it kills prayers. So yeah, and it also said it was harmful to humans. I don't know how it would be harmful to humans, but um. Anyways, turn on your cameras. Ellie has her camera on. Yeah, I don't get it. Why it's harmful to humans? I don't. I don't know either. I guess the poison. I guess if you touch it, maybe it will hurt you. I don't know. Page 394. Let's synthesize everything we've learned. 394. 394. What's today? Wednesday? Wednesday? It's closery day. Right, Emma, it's closery day because it's Wednesday. It's what? It's Wednesday? Well, it's Wednesday for reading, yes. I know. Page 394, it's weird. I told you this week and next week are weird because we had that testing in the middle of the week. 394, is everybody there? Yep. Yep, 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 yep. I can't believe there's so many of you on this Zoom meeting right now. I was gonna ask. Okay, synthesize. Readers think one way about a topic before they begin reading. Oh, we should have filled this in before we began reading. As they read, as they read, they gather information and ideas. So that's synthesizing when you have ideas before you read, and then you you read and you learn something about that animal or that thing, and then you also um, maybe change your um, your prediction about what you read. Maybe you thought the platypus would be a reptile, like we had talked about the platypus, no, the echidna maybe being a reptile when he described it to us. Or Anello, I think, said it maybe um, when it was described to him, it seemed like it would be more of a reptile, I think, or a bird, right, Anello, you said? A bird, because birds bird. also lay eggs. Yeah. You would expect that. Exactly. A bird is more expected, because. Huh. As we read more and more about the animal, we learned it was not a bird, it was not a reptile, it was actually a mammal. During this process, they combine or synthesize information that, that may lead to them change to change lead them to change their thinking or create new understandings. Go to close read notes in both texts and underline the parts that give important information about each animal. Use your notes to show how your thinking has changed. Oh, we read this so many times. Right? What did we think about, before we read this, what did somebody think about the echidna and the platypus? What did they think about both of those animals? Anybody can go ahead and answer. What did they think about those animals? Or maybe if you, Miss Gonzalez's class, if it's your first time reading the story, I don't know if it is, but uh, what did you think about these animals before we read about them? What did you think? Were they scary? Were they weird? Were they unique? Were they, what did y'all think they were? Or somebody in my class too can answer. I thought that they were unique. The, um, I didn't think they're unique, they're weird. So somebody said they're weird? What else? Uh, They're scary. They're scary, I like that one. Oh, is that somebody else? Jasmine, who's Jasmine? There's a Jasmine in here. Yeah, I think they were scary, I guess. I guess we could use that one. Because if you read about some of, if you just look at them from the outside, they look scary looking. The the echidna looks scary because of its spines. The platypus looks, or if you want to even say about that foot, that picture we saw of that foot. Remember? Yeah, that? that's just disgusting. <laughs> the, wait, 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 I thought that they were very interesting. A foot? Yeah, I thought they were very interesting. I thought they're like weird, like their adaptations are kind of weird. I didn't expect that. The head, I mean, the headshot, the kidnap would be able to roll up like a ball. So, um, before I thought they were interesting looking, how about we put the echidna or echidnas? Echidna, a kid, kidna, and platypuses. Flat. Are interesting 
No, we only thought I only me and Daniel only thought it was interesting when in the book because we went straight up about I just talking I, about it because it's so interesting. interesting. You put interesting looking. How about that? I they, thought the echidna was a porcupine. They're interesting. Sorry, that went over there. Interesting. We didn't. We we only like pay, really paid attention to the story. What before we read the story when we just saw it, we thought we were they were weird. Yeah, interesting looking is, I guess, another way to say they were weird. We'll do that. Echidnas and platypuses are interesting looking. Interesting looking. Interesting looking. That's a G over there. That says looking, by the way, for y'all. They're writing. Interesting looking. Um, Charlie, you have this paper in those um papers i took you on friday just look for page 394. okay I was gonna show y'all that what they were what talking. Page about. are you on? Um, three ninety four. Page three ninety four. I was gonna show y'all that what they were talking about that we were talking about a few minutes ago. How it's weird. What foot? The venom foot? The scary looking. Oh, foot. yeah, that was weird. And I see my face. You mean the human foot on the echidna? Yeah, I was gonna show them that one. Once you get done writing. Now Jasmine popped in but left. Looks like once she's here. I can't believe There's so much people that there's like two pages if you shrink it. Well, because normally we have like 13, 14, maybe even 15 people too. So we have quite a few. And FYI, we may have visitors sometime this week. Well, probably this week. Ms. Dellinger may pop in this week too. But probably during math. I have to pick my day. With math. And there may be somebody that walks in here. I don't know if they will or not tomorrow, but maybe. Maybe. That foot was the weirdest thing I'll probably ever see from an animal. So. What was one interesting, I guess, part of the echidna? Since we're talking about the weird and wonderful echidna, what was one interesting body part, I guess, about it? I think it was its muscles. I like the, so the way it can turn into a pancake. Spine. I think it was its spine. What now? I thought it was She said spine. it's spines. Fine. I think that was the spine too. So, well, yeah, I'd expect them maybe not, not the spine to be made out of hair, but maybe a fingernails. I would expect. I think the spine too. Is this it? Okay, hold on. Oh, uh, hold on. Let me see. Hold on. Who's asking if this is it? Somebody asks, is this it? Now one, yes, page 394. It's like almost towards the end of the book. Book. So they keep talking why we let Aiden find the page 394. Aiden, we we've been talking about the foot. We noticed this foot like right off the bat the first day we read this book of the echidna. Yeah, I noticed it. It was like, oh my gosh, that's scary. Right here. There's no three uh, 94. Okay, just follow along then Charlie. I thought I had put it in there, but it is what it is. Let's see. So it's here's the, the human foot. Here's the foot that we're like talking about right here. If y'all look at it, Miss Gonzalez's task, look at that foot. Doesn't it look like scary? 
It looks like a human foot. It's scary. Like if you look at it, it's ugly. It's so scary. It's ugly. It's ugly. It's scary looking. It looks like. Uh, I don't know. It's that foot. It looks like a human foot. It looks like a human. Foot. It looks like it has two sets of nails, or is that just a rock? It looks like it some of the rocks on mine up like it has two sets of nails. I think that the rocks it's rocking on, walking on. But then if you like, let me see that foot. It actually looks like a human foot. It does look like a human foot. That's what we had said with like nasty toenails or something. But if you look at the other feet of the other echidnas, they look totally like, different. Yeah, it's just for the, like the long build. I think it's for the long build, like a certain species of them. Yeah. Because I yeah, think the normal one, it's so furry like the other one, except oh, it yeah, doesn't. It has like a fat fur, but it doesn't look as ugly as the other one. I yeah. think the build one, I think the build one, since it said three, there's three species of them, I think one of them is like that, is that that's one of the species of them. If I saw that for my first impression, I would immediately hate them. They're ugly looking, yeah. Okay, let's go back to 394. That's what we were talking about with that ugly foot. So we've got a lot of people saying these spines, I think we can use are the, um, the not spines, the corpse. Are they, I guess they're spines, yeah. These spines, because they are made from the same thing as toenails and stuff, right? So, so these spines, these spines are interesting because they are made from because They are made from keratin, which is the same thing that makes up your hair and toenails. They're the same. Let me look up keratin exactly. I know it makes up your hair and your fingernails. I'm really grossed out or like not really amazed by that because I've seen a bunch of books about snakes and cats. Uh, but I just get grossed out when I get licked by a cat. It's just a cat lick. Yeah, oh, because I like cats. That. It's because cats they have they have like this hair on their tongues for hooks. Oh, they're kind of like the um. Was it? The yeah, and then it feels like sandpaper, and they kind of like just creep me out. I don't like it. I, I don't like getting licked by them. But I, I don't like, like clam lick. Um, okay, what's another, I guess, something interesting looking on the platypus or the, or the echidna? Sorry, we're talking about the echidna. What's something inter something else that's interesting? The muscles? The muscles? Yeah, the muscles, because the, the muscles help them become flat like a pancake. That's, that's not what the platypus. Oh, the echidna. Sorry, the platypus. You said platypus. I know. So the... Unusual, unusual muscles, 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 the unusual muscles, I'll just put the unusual muscles. So next, be thinking about what is interesting looking on the platypus. I already know somebody's probably going to say the feet or the web feet. It's a poison. The platypus is poison. Now it says the poison is interesting to him. Why is it interesting to you? Mm 
yellow. Anello. I can't really hear you. Can't hear me? Anello, can you? I can hear you, but it's just really low. And I have like my volume up to like, it's already high. I don't know. Can y'all barely hear me? Is that noise in the air? I can barely hear you, but I can hear you. Okay. I can hear you. Okay, perfect. That was somebody from somebody else. I don't know, Anello, maybe it's. I'll, I'll talk a little bit louder. I can kind of hear it louder. Again. What is interesting looking on the platypus? There's a few things that are interesting looking. Um, at. The poison. So somebody says the poison, or but where does the poison come from? Where the, the spurs. The spurs, I think it's the guy. Isn't the spurs it? inject the venom. Not the poison. The poison doesn't do anything until you eat it. Did you put poison in the chapter just because it rhymes? Or well, just because it has a P also? So we we are gonna say um the, the where's my pen? Ah, right here. The species are your shark spurs in here. The sharp spurs that deliver, I guess, the venom, right, Anello? Yeah, because remember, Angelina said that that poison you have to drink, and then venom is injected inside your body. Spurs that deliver, oh, that could be, deliver the venom. Yes, because Angelina says that you have to drink poison, but you get injected with venom. How she knows that, I don't know. She watches a lot of Discovery Channel, I guess. I don't know if that's true or not. I just like snakes too much and I know a lot about reptiles. Well, yeah, because like when you get like, I guess you get, um... Then Angelina, then Angelina, you're like a JoJo 2.0. Because like when you get, I guess like bit by like a, a viper or something, it's got the venom that's in its teeth that bite down and go into you, right? So you're saying it's injected into you. And then you said poison is injected into you? Or no, it's drink. You drink it, right? Poison can be, you can drink it or if you get your food poisoned, then there's yeah. two ways that you can die from poison. That makes sense. Now I think about it. Or, so it's eat or drink. Yeah, it's eat or drink. So venom is like put into you, like when a snake bite, or I guess if somebody like injected it into you. And then if you get like, so like poison is like for like people. Yeah, and like poison. Venom's for like animals and people. And if you get like food poisoning, you're like either eating something that's not cooked or something that's bad, or uh, maybe you drink something that's got something bad in it. There's different types of things. What else is interesting on the platypus? There's one thing I can think of. I don't really know. I don't really can we look anything. back in the story real quick? Yes. Let's go back in the story and see what's interesting on the platypus. It's a hot thing. The what? I think I heard somebody say it. The web feet. The web feet. Yeah. The web feet are interesting. The web. What? I think it's beak, because I remember it said it's plates. I never you can put that think anything like that. You can put that. I was going to put that. The web, the, the web, the web feet. Because I think they're interesting because they can swim with those feet, but they can also walk on land with those feet. So they kind of transform into two different things or Anello said um the beak the beak because it's got those sensors same thing with the kid that has those sensors in it that they can sense food using their beak the beak or the platypus so 
So what do we think now about the platypus? It has a lot of what? One of these words is our vocabulary words that help it in its environment. Oh, my legs. Adaptation. Yes. So the animals both have many adaptations that what? Both animals. I think the platypus isn't really interesting. I think the echidna is. So I'm sorry. I'm on team echidna. Same, Anello, even though because of its weird feet. I don't really care about the feet. I just like the short build. I like the short build. I don't like the long ones. The long build, those are weird. So do their adaptations help them survive in their environment? I vote echidna. Somebody's voting echidna. Oh, too bad we're not doing frequency tables this week. Otherwise, we'd vote on that. Both animals. We should have put, like, the temperature, the echidna's temperature, instead of the spines. Both animals have many adaptations, adaptations uh, to help them survive. Oops, I can't see that, Kenya. Hold on, let me zoom out. Without these adaptations, did it say in the story that these animals probably wouldn't live as long as they have, or they wouldn't be around now? Well, the, the platypus was discovered in the 1900s. The echidna's probably been there for like a long time. But what did it say about the echidna and being able to, was it torpor? What does it help it do? Torpor is when it goes like into hibernation is what it's called. If it wasn't able to um, have that lower body temperature and go into hibernation, would it still be around? Did it say it would still probably, it would be around still? If yeah, it would still, because I remember, it wouldn't as be, but since it has a lower body temperature already, and it's just making it lower, it still doesn't use as much energy as it well, would. It's helping it survive. And what happens, and then it also said, too, why, uh, wildfires happen that they go into hiding or torpor, and it helps them stay away from the wildfires. They can, like, hide somewhere. It's hibernating. Uh, it just said, it, it said torpor. All it said is that torpor, it's like hibernation and... <coughs> It, um, uh, wait, I don't think it said that, it says that torpor is, it says that torpor is, the kidney uses less energy, so it needs less food. This is useful during the winter when prey is harder to find. So it also helps when in times of crisis, such as when the horse fire occurs. So it, it like helps when, because it doesn't really need to eat as much. Exactly, yeah, and if there's a wildfire going on, you know, there's probably not as much food available for its heat because it's like burning, getting burned by something. I forgot to ask, what is the author's purpose in writing this story? I think y'all remember that. Informational text. An informational text, so the author wrote it to inform us about what? What are the two animals we're talking about? A kidnapped platypus. <laughs> Good job. Oh, we're going to get to do my next favorite. I don't really like the platypus because it didn't really have as many adaptations to help it survive. Like, it only survived for about the, the most 20 years. And then the king is 45. Like, it's two lives of a, just a platypus. Oh, I'm going to use your computer. Don't hold me. Y'all get, get this done. I'm going to do my next favorite, or y'all's favorite part, I guess. Corey, I'll stay before. What is today? 70 or what? Okay, to be specific, it's like three. Perfectly three. Miss Hernandez? Yes. Can I go to the restroom? Yes, go ahead. Uh, let me see. Where's my plant? Oh, I saw it. Yes, more revising and editing. Yes. Yes. We get to use our blue books today. Yay. We are excited, right? Cursive handwriting. 
This can dog surprise my class loves to do cursive handwriting, and I don't know why. I don't like cursive handwriting. I love cursive handwriting, but it takes Bradbury though, because I guess I like it. Get ahead. We did that one extra page. Oh no, we're not ahead. We're going to do one page of cursive handwriting. I think Ellie's, go Ellie's gonna start the Zoom meeting again if you're like on your lunch break. Um, can we do at least like a little bit of a page every day if we have time, Lytle? Well, like there's only like a couple of times a week that we'll do it, like maybe Wednesday. Maybe I guess Wednesday. Yeah. Wednesday. Well, Wednesday. Well, yeah. Okay. When you've got this done, make sure you've got this. This book out, Ms. Gonzalez's class, I don't know if y'all used it yet or not, but we've only used it like twice. Cursive handwriting. Hey, each. Thumbs up when you're done so I can move that book out of the way and put what we're doing up. Thanks. I think that's all we're going to do out of my view. We'll do that other close read tomorrow. We'll do that other one tomorrow. Got it. I got one. has got it. Your cursive. Success handwriting notebook. Miss Gonzalez's class, have y'all opened this bad boy yet or not yet? I may have not used it yet. I don't know. We opened it before. Oh, okay. Okay. We skipped ahead and I think we did last week's work the week before Thanksgiving. Oh, my class. We are on page. We'll start, we'll go to page 10. That was our next page. Page 10. Page 10. Imagine if, um, uh, since Ellie started the Zoom meeting, what if she started it during the night? And then someone not like a student, but like someone that was like, like a bad person was like trying to do something. And like, why is this already open? And then they went in and they just see the elf. <laughs> Oh, there's 29 people in here. All right, page 10. Y'all have it on page 10. I'm going to close this one. Let me move this one. We're doing the letter C and no, we're we, do sorry, letter D. We've already done A. We've done A. We've done. We, we've already done page. I want to do all of this. Yeah, I want to do all of them. We can't do all of them now. So we're on D. So the magic C. So C. And then you come up, up higher, and then you come back down. Ooh, this one looks fun. Let me get my purple pen. This is good lay flat. Lay flat. Lay flat. We'll use blue. Blue. So you make your magic C. You go up and you come back down. Oh, I wish you didn't get to see it. So you make your magic C. I can't see, you see it when I do it. Let me let me practice up here on this part. So you make your magic C. You come back up and then back down. Let's do all the small D's. I'm going to do extra D's. I want to see them. I'm going to ask y'all when we get done here. Oh, we have to write a word next. D A. We have to write dad. Oh. Emma, let me see yours. Charlie is lost. Charlie. All your stuff in one pile next to where you zoom so that you can just go to your pile and find everything you need for the day. Emma, let me see it. I was practicing how to hold a pencil. I'm doing it right now. Oh, you're practicing how to hold a pencil. Let me see. Let me see how you're holding your pencil. You can just hold it up to me. How would you hold it? Again. Okay, some people, yeah, some people hold a pencil a weird way. I find like this. Some people, 
Some people may hold it like this. I mean, yeah, I like to hold it like this. Yeah, I hold it with like my middle finger there. So copy the model. We have to do the magic C up, down, an A, then C, and then down, and then up. Dad. Oh, that's not that hard. Oh, but it's got add over here. I thought, the, I thought this rabbit was just gonna change his letter, but he just say, stays a C. Ah, but part of the letter C makes up the letter D. So now change the C into D. Oh, that's cool. I didn't even pay attention to that. So A. And down here, you're gonna write dad, 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 and then add. Be right back. Y'all finish that. Finish writing these words. You write dad down here. Yes. Why does this uppercase D have a little line? Line like that goes like through it. It right. kind of just makes it. It's. I know it's making it look more fancy, but isn't it the whole point of this just to make your writing look? I mean, make your writing faster, or is it to make it look fancier? I guess like it's kind of fancier. I don't know, but eventually, how? Remember when we read earlier, like. Your writing evolves. Some people may get rid of that little loop through the D and not make it. Yeah, I wouldn't make it because it's just kind of taking more time. Dad, D. Dad. Oh, this one's add to A. It always looks italic. Fun. Yeah, it looks like it's italics. It looks pretty. Yeah. So then you, the bottom one, you. I was so right handed. You come down, you make your loop, you go back up, and you make like that. That's not that good. So you come down, you loop it, you come back down, you come around, something like that. Whoa, that one looks huge. Oh, my D's look really weird. My, mine look really weird. Trace the D. So all we have to do down here is trace the D. So come back down and trace it. See how much time we have. Maybe tomorrow we'll do more. Oh, I think the little top part is like to connect the words. Oh my gosh, this cursive is way easier than how, how I was taught. Because how I was taught, it, I was just making so much sleep. I actually did both. You did both pages? Yes. Yes, I did D and Q. I mean, or G. E. Yeah, G. I did, I did Q. 
I mean, D and G. Thumbs up. Oh, I want to see that actually when you get done with it. I want to see it. I want to see it. I want to see it when you're done. Get to move on. I want to see it when you're done. I guess if you want to, you can write the name down here, Dallas. Before writing it down. You come around. Dallas. You don't have to write these names down here. So All right. The car. I guess like the if you start off with the D, you have to put the line because it needs to connect to another letter. And if you end with it right in the middle, you still have to put a line. If it's if you end with the D, you have to you can do whatever. You can add either just add a little one through, or you can just just leave it like that. So it's really only for connecting. The more practice you get, the better you're gonna get. Give me a thumbs up with your reaction once you got this done. We get to do some of my favorite things in the world. I did it. Some of my favorite things in the world. I'm already done. Okay. Make scroll through all 29 computer screens and see. Ellie, did you finish your? When we have a PE, um, we have PE at. Ten fifty. Music. Today's music. Oh, when we have. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I love music. Yeah, we have music. music. Natalie. I feel like a lot of people don't yeah, like, like music. music. When we so have, it takes so long. People don't like music. You it say it's so long. long. I think it's fun. Yeah, I think it's fun. It Hold takes on. so long fun. to finish music. No one takes long to finish, finish shirt for me because I'm trying to make it all like perfect. Only reason why I don't um, but fun. It takes That's time. what I think of music. Miss Hernandez. When we have music. We have music at 10.50. Oh, Mr. Nanda. Yes. Uh, does Ms. Gonzalez go? Um, yes, y'all can just join us for music, I guess. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. It doesn't go at 10 o'clock for music. Nope. That's tomorrow. Tomorrow, you go at 10 o'clock for art. Remember, they switch. Today is music from 10.50 to 11.35. Oh, there's so many of you on here. Okay, did you finish? Yes. Y'all do not have this, but you're gonna we're gonna need our reading journal anyway. So have your reading journal next to you. I'm gonna close this. This is how we're gonna start our writing from now on, our writing part of our day. So remember, I mentioned daily fix it. I need to figure out. I'm gonna figure out how to put these online somehow to where y'all y'all are able to see them as well. Right now, let's just follow along on my piece of paper, and I'm gonna ask y'all what is wrong with each one of these as I figure out how we're gonna. Why can't we just Why can't we just solve each problem by using the pen? Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Yeah, there. Never mind. Thank you, Natalie. Good job. I forgot about the pen, the annotate pen. So. Number one, my cat Bella is a real rascal. I already know some of y'all probably know what's wrong with this. I have these people answering every one of these every single day. I'm going to call on different people each day. So you. Oh, that's not how you spell rascal. Things and cheese. I just gave y'all the answer. No wonder. 
Anyway, I was like, why? Do Remember, I used to do I used to do those in third grade. Yeah, y'all used to do these in third grade. If y'all were sitting in my classroom, y'all would have a packet, probably about like this thick of them to do. So, my cat Bella is a real rascal. So somebody already said rascal is spelled wrong, but yeah, yeah, rascal, 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 rascal. Um, who is, that? is that um? That's not Daniel. Daniel, Anna, take another two. one in line two. And oh, hold on, we're not on number two yet. I didn't even cover that one. We're on number one. My cat Bella is a real rascal. Daniel, use the pen on there and write rascal the right way. So rascal is spelled wrong and the question okay. mark. Zildjian, okay, Zildjian, hold on. Daniel, fix rascal real fast. I need to figure out how we're going to do attendance. Hold on, while y'all do that. Oh, yeah, now I know. There. Well, you fixed it. Bingo, rascal, yeah, rascal is spelt. I'll fix it on here. Rascal is spelt with an A. And then I heard Zildjian before I put y'all on mute say, what Zildjian? There isn't supposed to be a question mark. It's supposed to be a question mark, it should be a what? A, um, a period. A period, yeah, good job. If, it's it's, all it's, it's either a period or an um, exclamation point. Because that, yeah, because it's not asking a question. When you use a question mark, you're asking a question. When you're using, um, when you're just saying a statement, you use a period. Or if you're showing a lot of emotion, if I said, wow, I would put a question mark after that because I'm showing a lot of emotion. Let's look at number two. I'm going to call somebody else. Does fish make good pets? Oh, this is like subject verb agreement, I think. Anello, fix one on there. Go ahead, fix one. D didn't it for the does, and you need to take away the E yeah. because it just. Anello. Should have been Anello. I don't think that was Anello. Fix it on there, Anello. So, do, do fish make good pets is one of them. What's another one? Can't see your screen. Oh, no. A question mark? What is there? Is there a period on there? I can't see. Oh, yeah. Who put the question mark? Who was that? Good job, Daniel. Um, and then you put Anello. I thought you had another one to fix. Did you fix it? What do you mean? I thought you had one to fix. I thought you were going to fix one. Did you yeah, I fixed it? it. Well, I didn't really fix it, but someone already put it on the board before I said it. What? Change does to what? I'm trying to take attendance on Ellie's computer. That's why. Hold on. 
when you take a tensorfield test. Is Chris is Christian still on here? He was on here earlier. Let's see, Chris. Y'all see Christian? I don't see him, right? Elizabeth, is Elizabeth on here? Ray Lynn, I saw Ray Lynn. I'm actually on her. Ray Lynn. Ray Lynn's on here. Where's Christian? Oh, there's Christian. No, oh, Christian is here. Ah. Hold on, sir. Ty is here. Charles is here. Angelina's here, Nielsen's here, what's his name, oh my goodness, Andrew's not here, Vida, are you here, you were here earlier, oh yeah, we were not, Natalie V, Dominic, okay, I saw Dominic earlier, did he leave? Where'd Dominic go? He was here this morning, wasn't he? Oh no. Don't say you're essential. Okay. I wanna do, no, we're gonna do my next favorite part. Y'all ready for my next favorite part? next favorite part y'all don't have this either but we'll answer oh i need to change it i need to tell me do and then we set a question mark right yep. Bingo. we're going to be doing two of these before we start our writing and then one of these one of these because i love revising and editing y'all do not have this what change, if any, should be made to sentence seven? My class, what did I tell you y'all should probably get rid of 99% of the time? What did I tell y'all to get rid of? No, no changes made. No change is made. Ms. Gonzalez's class, I don't know if she told y'all that, but most of the time, this is never going to be your answer. I would say there may be on your test out of the 24 questions that you have yeah 24 questions maybe it will show up once but it's a revising and editing test they want you to find the mistakes they made so that probably is hardly ever going to be there and on the benchmark we just took it was on there zero times it was on there zero times so let's look at number seven Many people, pay attention to how I read this and listen to it and see what, how it sounds. Many people come to the temple ruins to see the monkeys and study his habits. I'm going to read it again. Many people, many people come to the temple ruins to see the monkeys and study his habits. Hmm, we only need to look at it should be their habits. Oh, hold on. Y'all don't yell it out. Miss Nanda's looking in the chat. I already did we put it in the chat? Yeah, put it in the chat what you think the answer may be, and then we'll talk about it. Well, someone just said the answer. I know. Somebody just said the answer. Y'all put them in the chat. We'll do another one because somebody said the answer. And then we'll get on to writing. So many people come to the temple ruins to see the monkeys and study his habits. Think about the monkeys. Is Think about the word monkeys. Is it singular or is it plural? Is what you need to know. Now we'll plural. It's plural. Let me monkeys oh. as his. Hold on, Daniel. We have not. I have not given y'all the. Oh, um, actually, never mind. Come on, I want to see some more. I've got good job, Emma, um, Angelina, Natalie B, um, Daniel, Mariah. Was that you that said the answer earlier? Is that why you said sorry? Sophia, good job. But she sent it to everyone. 
And she sent it to everyone. Make sure you send it to me privately too when you send me some stuff. Maybe put this one on paper. No. Yeah. Y'all make sure y'all send it to me privately, or you're not gonna. Uh, Every. Gonna send you the, we just send you the answer. Yes, you send me the answer. Good job. You can't see the new chats because I know. If I scroll down, they won't let me. Good. Then you won't see everybody's putting their answer in there. Not that it really matters. But so I just said, look at the word monkeys. Monkeys is plural. His is talking about one monkey and his uh, and only one monkey. Are we talking about one monkey here? No, we're talking about how many monkeys? Multiple monkeys, numerous monkeys. Because yeah, monkeys has the S on the end, but it kind of means that there's more. So there's that means they're plural. There's more. So our answer would be what? You already told me. Change his to what? Come on, y'all tell me. Change his to what? I put it in the chat. There? Change to there, because there means more than one animal that's multiple animals or multiple people good job next time around daniel leave it alone raylan go quickly um next time on the next question i need y'all to send it privately in the chat i don't need you yelling out the answer or sending it to everybody oh isn't this from oh okay We'll just go in order. Okay, we'll go in order. So, how should sentence 21 be changed? What can we get rid of here? Because I can already tell you it is not your answer. What can we get rid of here? Who can tell me? Yeah, I can tell you. Um, what are we getting rid of? Um, what we're getting rid of is... When do I tell you to get rid of it? Letter J. Letter J. We'll get rid of it. And when you take your revising and editing test, especially with your editing, you only need to read sentence 20, 21. You don't need to read the whole story. So at night, the members of a family gather in a warm, cozy huddle to sleep. Plug in each one of these, like, Plug in gathering there and see if it makes sense. Cozy, you may look up, if you don't know how to spell, you can use dictionary.com and see, how do I spell cozy? Oh, shocking. Send me your answer in the chat. I did have answers. Already, good juicy stuff in here. I wish y'all had it. Let's see, I don't see very many of y'all. This one's a tougher one. Send me the answer. Good job, Manello. Good job, Sophia. Nobody said the answer. Nobody said the answer. You're only using the chat to send me something privately. Quit having conversations in the chat or I'm going to put you in a waiting room. Ooh, this one's harder. Let's work from the bottom up. How do we spell cozy? Who can tell me how we spell cozy? Do we know how to spell cozy? Uh, I think it's C-O-Z-Y. Is it? Let's see. Good job. Let's see. I'm going to go. I'm going to use my dictionary.com. Cozy is good. Cozy is like a only spell. Like, Let me see. The first one. I'm not sure if that it would be a... Because cozy's already spelled right. Let's see. Let's see. Oh! It's spelled. How is cozy spelled? C 
Oh, Z Y. So is it spelled correctly in our story? Oh, y'all can't see it. Yeah. 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 It is. Oh, now I'll just click. Yes, it's spelled right. So that answer is not our answer. Change gathered to gathering. At night, the family, at night, the members of a family gathering in a warm, cozy huddle to sleep. Think about that. Let me read it again. At night, the members of a family gathering in a warm, cozy huddle to sleep. Does that sound correct? Anello, I see Anello shaking his head. It doesn't sound correct. So the first way, how it goes before sounds correct, but the way it's spelled is incorrect. Gathering, I agree. So we're left with what as our answer, which a few of y'all got F as your answer. So, um, Daniel, I don't know why you're using annotate. I didn't ask you to, did I? Leave it alone. No, members. So we're talking about multiple members of the family. So that, do we need an apostrophe when we're talking about multiple people? Is it showing possession of anything is what the apostrophe means. Are we showing possession? Like the families had a party or the families had toys. Are we showing possession to anything? We are not, are we? Christian, leave the chat alone. No why you're using it. something that we're going to be doing this week. I, Ms. Gonzalez may have mentioned it to y'all last week. I don't know if y'all started talking about it. Uh, some of y'all saying it's easy. Y'all didn't even answer earlier. So who can tell me uh, Ms. Gonzalez's class? I know y'all probably write more than my class. We don't write a lot in my class. But have y'all talked about um, the rubric? which is what you're graded on. What, 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 what? I think maybe y'all may have gone over this. I'm gonna show y'all something. Some of y'all are gonna be like, what is that? I already know. Have y'all seen this, Miss Gonzalez? Oh, why did you do that? No, Miss Gonzalez's class, have y'all seen this? Oh, hold on. People just come in here and mess me up. Zoom out. Zoom out. Can y'all see my screen? Yes. Good job. Thank you, Elizabeth. Have y'all seen this Miss Gonzalez's class yet? I know she. We mentioned it last week. I don't know that y'all gone no. over. Like a grading rubric. Mm -hmm. So this week, I'm still trying to figure out how it's gonna work. We're supposed we're supposed to later on this week. Maybe Wednesday we'll start it. Maybe Thursday for sure. Thursday, if not Wednesday. We're gonna write a paper on what it means, what hard work means to think about it. Write about one type of hard work you do is gonna be our writing prompt. I don't know how I'm gonna get those from y'all because y'all are online, but we are gonna be writing a story and it's 26 lines. It's supposed to be 26 lines. This is how it's gonna be graded. So I know 
It's graded between a zero and a one. It's not graded like a normal test where you get a zero or a hundred. It's graded between a zero and a one. So our zero and a four. The high, the high score you can get on it is a four, which means you do everything you're supposed to. You write 26 lines, you have good transition words. Um, you have complete sentences. You what if you would get like more than 26? What, like 26 lines? That's a good question. I, I don't have the paper here. It's like, it either means you're more creative or you just, it either means you're more creative or if you have exactly 26 lines, you have, you have enough imagination that you can immediately stop there and you can have the good openings or endings of it. I know right now we haven't written a lot. Let me show you what the 26 lines mean. I don't, y'all don't have this paper. Once again, we got this writing assignment after we gave y'all y'all supplies. Can so I, I, I don't, sorry, go ahead, Jordan. Can I show you something? Um, what is it that you're gonna show me? Uh, is it something? It's a bunny. So what? A bunny, a bunny. Um, go ahead. I'm going to show you it. The camera's not on, so I can't see if you're trying to show me what it is. I'm trying to find where the, hold on, where the paper is. Oh, right here. So like I said, I don't know how we're going to get, how you are going to get this paper unless like I do physically deliver it to you or you print it out from home. But I know a lot of you guys don't have printers at home. So I don't know how. Look. Are they real? Are they real? Yes. Oh, do you, are those your buddies? two buddies? I didn't know that. This one is my uncle's. This one is mine, the white one. Do you take care of the what the bunny? Like, do you take care of it? Yes. Like, clean this, up. This one, this one right here. This one is my uncle. He's a brother. Okay. Do you take this care one? Is a sister. It's mine. Do you take care of your bunnies? Yes. Is it hard? Actually, this one, uh, right here. This one's my uncle's. He's a brother, the bunny. So is it hard? Is it a hard work to take care of a bunny? Is it a lot of responsibilities to take care of a bunny? Yes. Uh, that's the not, that's little, I'm glad you showed us that. You gave us like an example, which we're gonna talk about here in a second, of things that are hard work. I know some of you are gonna say I don't have tours or whatever, but we'll talk about that in a second. Anyways, can y'all see my paper? This is 26 lines. Anello. You asked me, what if I have more to write about? Well, you're only allowed this one piece of paper on your star writing test right here to write. See how it says- You can have like two. You can only have that one paper. You can have one. So you have to keep your, because the people that are reading this are probably some old ladies and they've got to read thousands of these papers. So they don't want to read two pages for every person because that's a lot of reading once again i don't know how we're going to do this for y'all um but we'll, we'll figure it out maybe you are just going to turn in right on a piece of paper in your journal which is what we're going to do for now is that my attendance no that's not my attendance so this is 26 lines i know a lot of y'all like that's a lot of lines i've never written that much before and i wouldn't really expect any of y'all to be able to write or a lot of y'all to be able to write 26 lines on Friday. I understand we haven't done a lot of writing and it's hard, but I'm going to help you in the coming days think of ideas to help us be able to write most of this paper. Because I can tell you, if you write only two or three lines, you're not going to get a two, three, or four. Maybe you'll get a one. Maybe if they're being nice. Do we have that paper? You do not have that paper, is what I was just explaining to everybody. I don't know. I don't know how, because the kids here at school, they're writing on this piece of paper and they're going to turn it in. I don't know what they expect from y'all online and how y'all are going to get this paper. Just like with the test we took, the paper test, or the test we just took last week, they gave this to us like a week and a half ago. So it, was, it wouldn't have been ready when your parents came to pick up any stuff. In the future, 
you'll probably have this paper in there. And I don't know how many of y'all have printers or anything, but I don't think a lot of y'all do, or your parents probably don't want you using the printers. I mean, but, my aunt's getting a printer for Christmas, but by the I know. Right now, like I said, we'll we'll probably just have to write in our journal. We'll have to write in our journal. I don't know how I'm gonna get a hold of those. I I don't know because you are online and don't have the paper. But anyways, we're gonna move on. This is what 26 lines look like looks like, and you'll have one piece of paper on your star test to do that test. Let me go back to what I was looking at. Not cozy. What was I looking at? Oh, not that. I was looking at the rubric. The rubric is what is used to grade your paper. So if you write 26 lines, your chances of getting a higher score are very good, but that doesn't necessarily mean that just because you write 22 lines that you can't get a four on your story. Another important thing, leave the chat alone. Another important thing to um, remember on your writing, when you're writing a paper, if you spell words wrong, it's okay. They don't take points off if you spell words wrong. Okay, if they can understand that you put that um, for what's a commonly misspelled word. Hmm. Maybe you for school, you don't put two O's, you only put one. They're not going to take off points for that if they understand that you're writing the word school because they can read that. You will lose points if you're off topic. So if I tell you our topic this week is um, write about one type of hard work you do and you write a story about your favorite ice cream, I can tell you, you're going to get a zero no matter how good your paper is because you're off topic. You want to stay on topic as much or the whole story. Otherwise, you're not going to get any points, even if it's a really, really good paper. Um, what else? Oh, if they can't read your handwriting, if they can't read what you're writing, because you got really bad handwriting you're probably gonna get a zero, which is unfortunate if it's a really good story. Another one, capitalization and punctuation. If you don't capitalize a few words in your story, you're okay too, just like with spelling. It's, if it doesn't affect your paper, they're probably not gonna take off points. But another big one is you've gotta be able to explain your reasons. You've gotta have a reason for each um, main or examples for each main idea, which the flow map we'll get to eventually, maybe today we'll talk about. And we'll, is there only supposed to be one main idea? There is three, there's three main, there's your beginning, your first paragraph, your introduction, then there's three main ideas sandwiched in between that and then your conclusion. There should be like five paragraphs. I'll show you. Here's what it looks like the flow map. Y'all know what a circle map is. I know I've seen y'all do circle maps before. We've done one before. Let me see if I can find the flow map. Or the tree map. I call it the tree map, I think is what I use. Or maybe we'll come up with one. One of hard work. Right here. This is like a tree map. So here's like a tree map. So here are your main ideas, your introduction, and then of course your conclusion would go down here. So your main idea one, main idea two, main idea three, and then you give me examples of, of whatever it is you're talking about to help support your main idea. If you don't give examples um, about your main idea, you're less likely to get a really good score. And I want y'all to score really good on your test, not poorly, but um i think that's all i wanted to go over on that do you all have your writing journals we're going to talk about this topic here or your reading journals writing journals reading journals let's go i know writing from home is not as easy homophones what is that this is like math hold on let me find my writing journal let's talk about this topic you probably don't even need your journal right this minute. On your writing test, can y'all see? Can y'all see my paper? Oop, it's blurry, it's blurry. Is it, hold on, it's blurry. Come on, focus. On your writing test, it will say written composition, and that's where you will find your writing topic. Let's turn it over. 
This is where it gives you your topic about to write about. Um, Anello, read the top part where it says read and then the box. What's in the box? I do not know of anyone who has gotten to the top without hard work. So that's a quote for Margaret Thatcher. What is she telling us? What is she telling, telling us, Anello? That no one's gotten a hundred or the highest score that is without hard work. So you have to put some work into everything you do to be successful, don't you? You can't just walk outside on a Monday afternoon, take your math test over two by two multiplication. Some of y'all I know will say, shake your head and say, I can make a hundred and make a hundred. If you've never put in work, if you haven't studied for three or four days, you're not going to get a hundred if you haven't been putting in hard work. Think about, think about all the hard work you do. It may be work you do at school, at home, or outside. Who wants to give me some examples of hard work? Maybe we'll use this paper here. Think about the hard work you do at home, at school, or outside. Give me, I'm going to list some examples on here. Y'all can, Anello, somebody's got to have an example of hard work you do. Do you, do you have chores at home? Do you help babysit your younger siblings? Do you help maybe care for your grandma or grandpa at home sometimes? Maybe to go feed, uh, maybe to go feed the animals? Um, yeah, do you, do you have, have like a dog? So, uh, Mariah, do you take care of your animals? Yes, what I feed my cats, I feed my, uh, my grandpa's little dog, and my aunt just go feed the two little uh, chickens. So is it hard work taking care of those pets? Yes. So taking care, y'all don't have to write this down. I'm just listing some examples here. Taking care, care of- Taking care of your pets? Of my pets, okay. What's another example of something that's hard work that you do at home or maybe it's at school? Oh, wait, uh, let's, uh, um... Maybe babysitting. Babysitting? Okay. Um, babysitting your cousins? Babysitting. Um, you can call my daughter. It's 458. I appreciate we'll it. Say, the only thing that I can think of is actually making my pets have fun. Because, like, I never have time. I was like, um, let's say if, like, a baby cries and it's going to be really yeah. hard to make it babysitting, definitely babysitting younger cousins or siblings has to be hard because you have to you have to figure out first of all what's wrong if they're babies right if they're babies why are they crying are they hungry do they have um a diaper change are they not feeling well are they sick um is something else bothering them you have to figure out what's wrong with them because they can't speak to you like you can speak to them right what else is an example of hard work? Man, there's so many of y'all in here. I know somebody's got an they example. Like actually uh, doing homework. 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 Who said homework? Me. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. I'm trying to figure out who it is. Who's me? Uh, I said it. Ariana said homework. Why is homework hard work for you? Why is it hard? Because sometimes it's like sometimes it's time and multiply that I keep forgetting. There we go. So she's saying homework. And she's saying sometimes homework hard. You can forget sometimes. You forget, yes. Like last week. We only have like one piece of homework. That's it. You're gonna have more this week because there's plenty of math. I can tell you there's plenty of math homework this week. That's for sure. Like we just learned two by two multiplication. And last week on Monday and Tuesday, when I was giving it to y'all, some of y'all would be like, this is really hard because you forget a step. Maybe you forgot how to do it. Maybe you weren't paying attention and didn't take good notes to refer back to, or maybe you were out sick and you, you didn't know what was going on for a few days. So homework can be hard because you might not know what to do. There may be a lot of homework. Um, what else makes it hard? There's a lot and you forget what to do. What else makes it hard? I'm trying to think. 
um, you just don't want to do it. You have you don't want to do it because you don't think it's fun. It's boring, right? So it kind of makes it hard. What else is hard that y'all do? Come on, y'all got to have some more examples. Mm -hmm. hard that do. I know there's 30, 29 of y'all here. Somebody's got a hard job at home. They do. Think about everything that you do at home. Y'all been at home for a while. What's something hard you have to do? Uh, clean up the house. Oh, chores. There you go, chores. Why are chores hard to do? Because you can get a lot sometimes. Chores? Oh, those are chores. You got to do um, the, 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 Well, now, now that I just heard the word chores, I, mean, I just no, thought it was like actually like. Hey, oh, hold on, there's somebody speaking. You cannot speak for somebody. There's 30 of you on here. Go ahead. Who was talking first before Daniel? Ariana, was it you? Yeah. Go ahead. You you do the dryers. Mm hmm And you pick up clothes. So there's chores because you have a lot, or it's hard work, maybe doing laundry. You hate doing laundry. Or what about like outside yep. if you had to do stuff? Outside? Oh, some I'm just um some boys maybe. Maybe their dads want them to help mow the grass. That would be a hard. All thing. I do is all I do is just recycle. Or maybe you throw out the trash. That's your specific job to throw out the trash. And sometimes that's hard work because it's heavy and it's stinky. Um, cleaning around your house though can be super hard because if you you create a big mess, you got to go back and eventually clean it up. Um, Daniel, what were you saying earlier when I cut you off? Um, uh, well. Well, because I heard the word chores. Can't, can't, can't you just play all day after, after after school and I do homework if I have homework? So you don't want to do it. You just don't want to do it. Yeah, that's what I said with homework. Maybe you just don't feel like... I should, I, I should probably, like, start doing chores or something. Um... I think Mariah, you were saying something, right? About hard work. I was gonna say washing dishes. Washing dishes, so that's like chores is hard work. I don't like, personally, I hate washing dishes. They gross me out. That would be hard work for me. Well, I don't really eat really gross food. I don't really eat, I, I don't really do it, but I've, I've done it a little bit. Not really. Uh, Zildjian says, I'm guessing, Zildjian, you're saying taking care of your animals, your pets? Yes. Yeah, so Zildjian has, Zildjian says taking care of his pets. And he has a horse on there. Do you have a, a horse that you take care of? Yeah. A horse. What's difficult about taking care of a horse? Horses are hard. Yeah, they're big animals, and you got to keep them under control sometimes. They're big animals, and you have to keep them under control. They get excited. If they kick you in the wrong place, they can do some serious damage. I saw a picture where a lady, I think, got kicked. Where it was by her own horse. He just got excited, like Zildjian said. And I think he kicked her, like, in her ribs or something. And she was bruised, like, all the way. Let me stand up. She was bruised, like, all the way right here, and it broke, like, several of her ribs because... Their, their kicks are so powerful. So taking care of a horse could be very difficult because they're big animals. Sometimes they get excited. They, you know. Imagine it was a kid. Yeah, and um, they can hurt you because they get excited. Um, what else? Wait, wait. Um, oh, yeah. and if you're trying to ride them. If you're trying to ride, yeah. If you're trying to ride, like, ride them to, you know, move yeah. them, they can get too excited and hurt you. Like like sometimes if you're riding a horse riding, and the, riding a horse isn't food, as hard oh, and you're riding on a horse huh? you probably will fall in the bucket yeah if you're trying to you know move the horse and you're riding on it it could be dangerous or it could be hard work too yeah what about the horse is easier than actually getting kicked by it dominic's not on here is he i was gonna ask dominic what about sports i know it's kind of hard right now because of the pandemic but does anybody else play sports on here or they have played? i play sports it's just that i don't really do it at all any, anymore because covid i was gonna say is it hard work playing it's only been like maybe three days since i stopped quarantine so is it hard work playing sports though think about it's easy it's easy. Well, if you're good at it. Well, if you're good at it, 
good at it. Guess, maybe like so what, Mariah? Go ahead. Maybe for like whenever you're training, say um you're in football and you're like training, I guess. And it's hard work when you play the game right there. I'm not sure. Playing sports. So train, he's saying it's hard work. Read up top, it says Anello Red. I do not know of anyone who has gotten to the top without hard work. Think about playing sports or any sports you played or your siblings played or you've seen on TV. Do you think those professional athletes or even you yourself have gotten good by not put by not doing anything? I don't like watching professionals because I think they're bad because I don't really think that they use their full mind for potential. They just like play the roles and that's it. So maybe they're not putting in enough hard work. They think they're really good and Maybe they're not. If they put in a little more hard work, they could become better at their sport, right? Think about a lot of the practices, especially if you're on a travel team. I wish Dominic was here. I was going to say, if you're on a travel team for baseball, you've got to practice three or four times a week. And some of y'all don't want to practice three or four times a week. I don't think you need to because you're already good enough. But couldn't you become better by putting in a little more work? Dominic's not on here. Man, I, wish I would used to practice every day because also I had latchkey and also my dad is my coach. So it's a lot of work when you've got latchkey after school, you got school in the morning or daytime, and then you got to go to practice. There are going to be days where you don't want to go to practice because it's a lot of work. It's too hard. You're tired, right? Give me one more example of hard work. Somebody's got to have one more besides chores, homework, babysitting, take care of pets. Farming. Um, but think about something that you do personally that's hard work because that's what I want you to write about. Think about something you do personally that's hard. Um, I work in my garden. You so, uh, go plant crops. So okay. garden. So somebody I don't, know garden. I don't know. Maybe some of y'all do garden. The gardens because you get to you gotta plant plant seeds for uh plants and plants produce the plants produce the food. So somebody said hard work, maintaining a garden. That is hard work because if I plant my flowers today and I water them today, don't, and I don't water them for a week, what are the chances that they may be dead by the time I get back in a week? They're probably gonna die, right? Okay. Yeah, they're very high. They're, yeah, you're, they're probably gonna die. So it takes a lot of work and effort each day to maintain a garden, doesn't it? Or maintain even, I guess, any chores you have too, if you think about chores. It takes a lot of work. You can't just water your plants today and they're gonna be alive tomorrow and hope that they're alive tomorrow or the next day or the next day. And not only that, what about bugs? Bugs like to get into your plants. I've had plants where the ants like eat the leaves. You gotta make sure eat a lot of mine. Yeah, see, you gotta make sure you put pesticides out. You gotta put fertilizer out. It is a lot of work to maintain a garden. That's for sure. Well, at least, I mean, at least yeah. try not to put anything that harms bees uh, or uh, butterflies. Technically, at our new house, we have a garden. Uh -huh. so there's like a compost area and then like a lemonade garden. Well, it's kind of like that, but like we have lemonade trees. Yeah, and it's probably a lot of work to maintain those. Think of it like if you were a farmer, it would be a lot of work yeah. to maintain them. I, I, I think I remember my mom saying if we want the plants to go good, we had a certain time where like at 3 or 30 or 5 o'clock we had to go. And yeah. Wood and then stuff. Or like if you're trying to... some kind of fruit in the back of my house. I don't really know what it kind of is, but I don't really do nothing for it. It just grows on its own. Every so spring, I mean every summer, I just eat of whatever fruit it is. I don't even know what it's called. I just eat them and I like them. Sometimes, yeah, they'll, they'll be able to grow pretty much with low maintenance or no maintenance, but there are certain plants, especially if you, you have a garden, you want to keep your house looking real nice, that you have to maintain it. It takes a lot of work, time and effort. You got to water, you got to keep the bugs away, you got to use fertilizer, right? Okay, hopefully mm -hmm. tomorrow we'll start with a circle map maybe and y'all can start. This is going to be hard for me because I don't mm -hmm. have... Playing That's, sports isn't really any hard. It's not really like why, anything. That's why we were thinking about this, trying to think about some ideas. Think about maybe school, Anello. I don't know. Maybe something in school is hard for you or was hard for you. Think about something that was hard for you, maybe. If I was younger, I would have nailed this test because what I had a problem with when I was younger is I would always place my toys and I never put them up. Okay, so that could be like 
I could be something you could write about and give an example of why it was hard to always clean up your work. You just didn't want to do it. Maybe your parents are always helping you put them up. I don't know. But you've got to be able to write about something that is hard work to you. And we'll discuss it more tomorrow and maybe we'll do our circle map at least and we'll pick something and we'll, we'll put some ideas in there and maybe you'll have some ideas for what's hard work for you. But I think as homework for this, I want y'all to think of something. If it's not on here, some, maybe you'll come up with a different idea of what's hard work. Think about what's hard to you. Think about it and be, you gotta be able to describe why it's hard or explain to me why it's hard. So think about that. Got it? We have music. Where are we going? Music. Music. I think you can go into Canvas and get the music Zoom link, I'm guessing. Or I can put You can always get it. It's for like all the side ones. For like P-E-R and music. Yes. You can just get the link from there. Bye. And then you have lunch until 1225. We come back here in my class at what time? Every time back, I guess. At what time? 1225. 1225. 1225. 1225. 1225. We're going to jump right into math at 1225. Got it? Hopefully there's 30. Okay, 1225. Bye. All right. I will see you later. Any question from any of y'all? No, no, no. Okay. Thank you, Drake. And then um, lunch and then be back here at 1225. Okay. Bye. What to do in the meantime? Zildjian, music. Go to your canvas and find your music Zoom link. It should be in there. All right, I will see y'all later. Go to music. I'm leaving. Bye. Bye.